Are they? Wind chimes. Silent wooden wind chimes. You ready, Sally? Grimoire, I've been standing here for seven and a half minutes. Just checking. Do you have the map? Uh, yeah, but it's basically blank. Did you read the case file? What do you think? I'm not sure yet. It's really not a lot to go on. Did you read it? Yeah, I'll read it on the way to the crime scene. It's a bird bath. Is that just rainwater? It looks a little weird. The birds seem to like it. They're even singing a little tune. Please don't do that. It's a garden, I think. It's currently far away. Uh, we could walk closer to it. Ready when you are. Spooky. What do you think it's for? I think it's to scare away detectives. Is it working? No. It's a statue of some hideous, scaly, bipedal fish monster. Playing a harp. Playing a harp. Hang on a second. This isn't just a regular statue, is it? Something tells me we're not going to solve this just yet. Let's come back later. It must do something. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? It's a bandstand. Bit small for a bandstand. It's a one-man bandstand. It's quiet. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to say... Too quiet? It's not. It's an appropriate amount of quiet. It's a stone carving. Wonder how it got cracked. I think it's supposed to look like that. It's an egg. There's an O on the floor. Oh, yeah. Tangle. Twer. Twer. Should we ring the doorbell? Why would we not? It's a little melody. Do you think he'll start to move if we try to go inside? No. I think he'll just silently judge us. Is that an envelope? It's been opened, but the letter's still in there. Let's read it. Isn't that an invasion of someone's privacy? No, oh, definitely. Little bird feeders. How do you know they're for birds? A path leading towards the stone square. Don't think it's locked. Well, oh, that means we can just walk straight in, right? I'm pretty sure that's the rule, yeah. That's a big glass tube filled with water. There are weeds in there. And sand. It's an aquarium? Could be. Except there's nothing living in it anymore. What is that? I think it's a family tree.
Freya Fellow. The murder victim. She's barely related to the main family at all. A big letter F. Of course. Who doesn't hang a giant banner of their initial in the lobby of their mansion? This one has a big P. That's P... probably important. How very P... perceptive of you. There it is. The unfinished portrait of Flora Fellow. So, what, Freya was killed halfway through painting it? Looks that way. I wonder if all of Freya's paintings are this creepy. Maybe it's just because she never got to finish it. There's something wrong with the crime scene, and something really weird about the murder weapon. We didn't find a murder weapon. a knife tipped with blood because it stabbed Freya. What? Weird, huh? You think Freya was stabbed by a painting? Not by the woman from the painting, but by the painting itself. Mm-hmm. Freya was standing right up by the canvas when she was killed. There's blood on the knife. It's the murder weapon. Right, but it's not actually a knife. It can't stab. See any other knives around here? Case closed. The case is not closed. And even if you were right, where does that leave us? A painting can't be a murder suspect. Is that a gramophone? I think so. Except it's got a tape deck instead of a turntable. It's also got a big crack down the middle. What about the cassette tape? Yeah, it sure is. Pink. Do you think it still works? The gramophone? We could give it a go. Is that an egg? An egg with bird feet. It's also covered in gemstones. What a completely ordinary object. I think it's a container for something. Those gems look like they come off. Nope. Did you check the clue on the back of the egg? I'm pretty sure it explains where to put each of the gemstones. Nice work. Did it unlock? What's in there? 
nothing. Nothing? Well, I'm not leaving without a clue. An empty egg is a clue, right? The outline of Freya Fellow looks like she fell onto her back. There's a single patch of blood right in the middle. No real signs of a struggle. That's weird. What? Her feet were right up by the canvas. So? So she was probably standing really close to the canvas when she fell. Let's check the case file again. Supposedly, Freya was working on the painting when she was killed. Looks like she was still holding her paintbrush and palette when she fell. Didn't even get a chance to clean her brush. Freya's painting supplies. A bunch of old books. Covered in dust now, but they look well read. A little pot plant, balanced on the window ledge. It's the only plant in the entire room. Flora... fellow? Hey, sorry to barge in. I'm sure you're still in some distress. We need to ask you a few questions, I'm afraid. Did you witness the murder, Flora? Nothing. What do we do? Not sure. She's entitled to her silence, I suppose. For now. Is there anything you'd like to tell us, Flora? I don't really know anything about you at all. I think that's the way she likes it. We'll just have to ask other people about her. Yeah, okay. Freya was painting your portrait yesterday. Is that right? Was this something you had planned with her ahead of time? Was there something special about yesterday? Did you talk to Freya at all while she was painting you? She's not going to answer us, is she? Nope. But at least we can say we tried. Flora, you were definitely in the room at the time of the murder. Surely you must have seen something? Can you tell me anything about what happened to Freya? Ah, she's acting pretty suspicious, if you ask me. I don't know. Maybe she really doesn't know anything. How is that possible? We're at the top of the tower, right? I think so. Why? Doesn't matter. It's nothing. There's a metal plaque on the bench. Is there a message engraved on it? I think there was at one point, but someone scratched it off. It's a big stone dais. Biggest one I've ever seen. First one too. A wooden trunk that opens up into a full desk. I want one. Is that a clock? If it is, it's a clock with four faces. I'm guessing it doesn't tell the time. So what does it do?
got it. I'm impressed. What's in the box? A little tool thing? Looks like a telescope. But I'm not actually sure what it is. You ever see a mushroom that big before? Not in real life. Whoa, nice cape. You're not fellows or pointers. I'm sure I shall immediately regret asking. But who are you, and what is your business here? I'm Sally, and this is my sidekick, Grimoire. A private detective, Grimoire. Really? You're a detective? If this is a joke, it's not a good one. <clears throat> who are you, anyway? Private Detective Hawkshaw. Oh, nice. Hawkshaw's a cooler name than Grimoire. Maybe I'll become her sidekick. You're not on the Freya Fellow case, too, are you? That is classified information between myself and my client. Clearly, this is something which eludes you. But a real detective refrains from handing out information to persons unknown. Oh, right. Now, if you would, I have work to do. It's not in my interest to discuss personal details. Even if you're one of the suspects in a murder? <sighs> Very well. Let us make a small exception. Ask. Oh, what are you doing here? I'm on a case at the behest of my client. How long have you been at Tangle Tower? 133 hours. Uh, five and a half days. Who are you working for? I am not at liberty to answer that. Now, I shall permit you one more question. What crime are you- How'd you get that scar? It's cool. You really think so? As it happens, I completed an examination of Flora's room on the morning before the murder. I've been investigating every single room at Tangle Tower. Hers is one of the last on my list. Did you find anything unusual? Nothing but a thin layer of dust and an atmosphere of somber melancholy. Was Flora in there at the time? She spent the duration of my search staring up at the sky, out the open window. Didn't say a word, although I'm told this is the expected behavior. What did you do after that? I spent the early evening searching the library. It took longer than it should have. Fiona leaves that room in a permanent state of disarray. Fiona was in the library too? I expected her to make an appearance, but she did not. And you stayed in the library the rest of the day? Not quite. Towards the early evening, my examination of the library was unexpectedly disrupted. Sounds of running, wailing, shouting from several floors above. I vacated the library, but before I could begin my ascent, Professor Pointer appeared. He emerged from the Pointer staircase, crossed the hall, and begun up the fellow staircase. Our eyes met. He was breathless. Something had caused him great alarm. He told me to stay out of the way. I consented. I decided to return to my office in the Stone Square. As I was passing through the front door, Penelope called out from behind me. She was clutching the banister of the Pointer staircase with an apprehensive manner. She wished to know where Professor Pointer had gone. I told her what had transpired. Then, she too crossed the hall and disappeared up the fellow staircase. More so than at any moment prior, I felt like quite an intruder in the house. I took my leave, out towards the stone square. The grounds were silent. There were no signs of human life. Even the greenhouse was without its typical inhabitant. I noted that he, too, must be entangled in whatever was transpiring in Fellow Tower. An unremarkable hour passed before the gardener finally made his appearance. He spoke to me of what had occurred. His report was as clumsy and cumbersome as the man giving it. Did he seem upset? He was rattled. That much was clear. But sorrowful? Mournful? I cannot say. Is that fruit? It's shaped like fruit. 
Too shiny to be fruit. I think it's glowing a little, too. Safe to eat, do you think? I'm gonna say no. Hanging baskets. They're so high up. To you, maybe. You're only two inches taller than me. Two inches makes all the difference. Tools. Used by a gardener. For gardening. This one's in a little pot. Okay, that is definitely not edible. It looks like a gemstone, don't you think? A little chart of, uh... Actually, I have no idea what it's about. What do you make of it? Not a whole lot. Sally, don't move. We're being watched. Yeah, I see him. He's a little too big to hide in the bushes. Is anyone going to say anything? Or shall we just stand around staring at each other? Right. Sorry. Sorry. That's better. I'm Sally. And the guy hiding behind me is Detective Grimoire. Who are you? Fitz Fellow. The gardener. Mm-hmm. And why are you so tall? I don't know. You work here. As the gardener. I don't get paid to do it. It's just my area of interest what's the deal with the plants they're all kind of weird right did you see the lake that giant green and purple lake surrounding the entire house yeah i clocked it the color is just a byproduct of what poison it's not poisonous not to you uh what's this got to do with the plants the water controls all life just like anywhere else on the planet clouds form rain falls the water grows the plants, animals eat the plants. Anything you've perceived as an irregularity is simply a result of this hydrological cycle. Could you say that again, but like, condense it, as if you were talking to a slightly stupid person? Our lake water causes the unpredictable alteration of DNA, sometimes. Alteration? Like mutation? That'd be the official term. For us, it's normal. Just nature. And you're the local expert on all this stuff? No. I'm just the gardener. I was in my greenhouse, watering and weeding. Sounds exciting. Was anyone else around? Not at first. Penelope came in a little later. She likes looking at the flowers, I think. Did you speak to each other? A little. Not too much. We both left the greenhouse in the early afternoon. I went up to my room. Then I came back outside to weed the main gardens. Didn't see anyone else. After that, I went up to the garden outside my room. And? Let me guess. Watering and weeding. Right. Did anything happen to you yesterday, Fitz? I was up in the rooftop garden. It was quiet. And then, it wasn't. I can't describe it. Could have been a scream, but it didn't sound human. We thought it was coming from Flora's tower, so we went up there. We? Poppy was with me. Did I not mention that? Flora's room was locked. That's normal. She usually locks it from the inside. I knocked on the door and shouted. Nobody responded. We became concerned. You kicked the door down? I did. Poppy and I went in. Freya was right there, laying on her back. Flora was there too, but I barely noticed her at first. Poppy left the room for a while. When she came back, she had her father with her, and Fifi too. Penelope arrived shortly after that, with Felix in tow. I thought that was odd. You don't normally see the two of them together. Felix took charge. There was nothing else I could do to help. I wanted to go back to my room, but I realized nobody had told Detective Hawkshaw anything. I found her pacing back and forth around the stone square. When I approached her, she snapped at me. I think she was annoyed about being made to wait outside so long. But when I told her about Freya, she fell silent. Fitz's room is unlocked. 
It's up in the fellow tower. This could be interesting. Oh, wow. What? It's a big empty space. An empty glass and an empty plate. Looking at it is making me want to cry. Why? I don't know. Huh. Neither of these lights have an actual light bulb. They're just decorative. Oh, so decorative. It's a little handmade card. Someone's drawn a heart on the front. Inside it says, To Fitz, from PP. That poor plant. Looks pretty healthy to me. Healthy, but sad. I think it would rather be outside. Doesn't look soft. Hello. Not hidden very well, is it? Doesn't need to be. It's locked. It's a combination lock. Sort of. Yeah, it's wrapped in a cloth. Hold on. Huh, that's kind of ominous. Ah, uh, there's someone outside the window. Something outside the window. It's probably just a rock. You sure? It's locked, but it leads outside. I thought we were halfway up a tower. We are. What's that thing by the handle? Nothing. Still locked. The tiles have all got that same sun symbol on them. Those moon symbols in the slots. Are they connected? Maybe they're connected, but also not connected. Let's come back once we know what to do. Yes, it's also a lamp, for some reason. It's a drinking horn. Is it full of ale? Or mead, maybe? Right now, it's just full of dust. Oh. It's a magic lamp. Can we summon the genie? If we get really stuck, sure. Shelf junk. That's a massive conch shell. Do you think there's a little crab living inside? I hope so. It's a barometer, but it's broken. I've never seen a barometer that wasn't broken. A little hand-painted statue. How can you tell it's hand-painted? Well, the paints are right there on the desk. Also, I mean, no offense, but you can just tell. Nice. A real treasure chest. How do you know there's treasure in there? Why else would it be locked? Plus, there's a treasure map hanging directly above it. What's the deal with that painting on the front? 
Not sure. We should check that treasure map, too. in the box. More wooden models. These are a little different to the one on the desk. The entire room is made of wood. Oh, it's not just made of wood. I think it's the actual hull of a ship. Sir? Can you hear me? I'm Private Detective Grimoire. I have some questions for you. Grimoire. Good mysterious name. <laughs> I'd rather like it. Felix Fellow at your beck and call. And, uh, this is my colleague, Sally. Yeah, that's a perfectly good name as well. Thanks. If you would, Mr. Fellow, we really need to ask you about the murder. I must say, I'm rather jealous of you two. Oh, yeah? Why's that? Out here solving mysteries, <laughs> exploring new places, uncovering secret rooms, hidden treasures. That's what life is all about. Secret rooms? Uh, generally speaking, you know, that sort of thing. So, Felix, what exactly do you... Uh, do? Is it not obvious? I'm an explorer. Explorer slash treasure hunter. Yes, well, best in the world. We're talking like curse statues, spike pits. Uh, it's a little more sophisticated than that. But I've certainly seen my share of danger, if that's what you're asking. And, uh, if I may ask, uh, when did you retire? You listen here. I may be between ventures right now, but it's simply not in my nature to stay in one place for too long. I go wherever the winds of destiny take me. Don't you live here with your wife and daughter? Yes, well, the fellow family has certain loyalties, and with uh, Flora the way she is... And... Nothing wrong with raising a family, Mr. Fellow. <clears throat> Don't misunderstand me. Fiona and Flora are my entire world. They are the greatest treasure of all. Uh-huh. Why on earth would you want to know about that? The murder of Freya Fellow. The reason we're here. Ah, right. Uh, nasty business. Uh, very unfortunate. <clears throat> I, I regret that I can't be of any help, uh, but I wish you all the best in your investigation. Hear that, Grimoire? We're done here. Let's go. It's a simple question, Felix. Well, I'm sure you're up to it. I just... it's... Well, there's not much to tell. Uh, mostly, I was in my room by myself, uh, working on Flora's... Uh, working uh, on a project. <laughs> Your room is quite close to Flora's tower. You didn't hear anything unusual? What qualifies as unusual? What have you got? It was dusk. A feeling lingered in the air. Malevolent, perhaps. Uncertain <laughs> as life itself. Abridged version, please. Right. Fine. I heard someone heading down the stairs, just outside my room. The footsteps were calm, orderly, so I thought nothing of it. Shortly afterward, I heard a second set of footsteps going the same way. This time I could tell just from the sound that something was wrong. So I looked out into the hallway. 
I got a glimpse of Poppy disappearing down the staircase to the floor below. I didn't know what to make of it, to be honest. I thought perhaps she'd had a disagreement with Fitz, as I know those two are close. So I looked into his room, just in case, but it was empty, as was the garden beyond his window. Back in the hallway, I bumped into a very concerned-looking Penelope. She was heading up Fellow Tower to find Professor Pointer, so I escorted her. We went into Flora's room. Poor Freya was laying on the floor. Fiona, Poppy, Fitz, and Pointer were there already. Flora, too, of course. <laughs> Soon enough, everyone else made their excuses and left. Including you? Not I. <laughs> I stayed. Flora needed me. Not the kind of lamp I choose for my bedroom, but fair enough. It's cool. Looks like old mining equipment or something. A pillow with a paw print pattern. It's a cushion. Yeah, but that doesn't alliterate. It's a fish, I think? I think it looks more like a whale. Fine, it's a whale. Could also be a shark. Painting supplies. Freya's bear. Looks pretty depressed. He's had a rough couple of days. Drawings, taped up on the wall. What's that one on the left? Looks like two people standing together in a garden. One of them's holding a red rose. That's weird. What did you find in the drawers? Nothing. They're completely empty. It's a little wooden box for paintbrushes. To the casual observer, maybe. They're not real paintbrushes. Looks like they're part of some kind of lock mechanism. Nothing. Did you find a hint on those scraps of paper? It looks like a ripped up jigsaw puzzle. in the box just a photograph well most of a photograph that painting is really something why would you want it looming over your bed like that maybe Frey enjoy the atmosphere it creates the atmosphere of chaos and oppression hang on there's a smaller version down by the floor it's a photograph. Sure, why not build a science lab in the corner of the library? The search for new knowledge. The archiving of old knowledge. It's downright poetic. A chalkboard? Is this a library or a classroom? I'm not sure I learned anything from that. Is that a snow globe? Of sorts. Hey. 
Hey, look at that. It's a model of Tangle Tower. There's a lake and those weird mountains. What are you thinking? That would make an amazing souvenir. A book on the floor. Fundamental entomology. Hmm, I guess somebody dropped it. It's an illustrated book about birds. It's been left open. It looks like somebody was halfway through reading it. Or it was left open for us to find. Ever so slightly unnerving. Uh, what's in those bottles? I'm not sure. Soil samples? Curious. I would expect bacteria of that nature to thrive in these conditions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Taking all the environmental factors into account, there must be something I am still missing. Uh, may I talk to you, miss? She knows we're here. She just doesn't care. I am a detective, and I need to talk to you. Correction, you do not need to talk to me. Oh no? How come? Because I am not a suspect. I am completely innocent of any and all crimes. Thanks for letting me know. Speaking of which, you have now been at Tangle Tower for over 23 minutes. Surely you have already reached a sturdy hypothesis. A hypothesis? About the murder? Yeah, come on, Grimoire, hurry up. My apologies. Unfortunately, protocol dictates I must at least meet all the suspects. And that includes you. So, uh, could you tell me your name? Fifi Fellow, microbiologist, inventor, innovator. You will need to be more specific. One's self cannot be summarized in a single response without doing one a great disservice. So true. Well, first of all, you're a fellow. So does that make you the daughter Correct. of- Correct. My father and mother are named Flora and Felix, but you need not question either of them. It will only waste valuable time. Neither of them are capable of murder. Thanks for the tip. Fifi, you said you were a micro... something or other? Microbiologist. But it is an insignificant label. My studies cannot be categorized in any one recognized field. What made you want to become a scientist in the first place? I harbor an intrinsic fascination with the microscopic. I constructed my first one at age 10. Constructed a microscope? Correct. And what's that thing on your head? Did you make that too? My eyesight began to deteriorate when I turned 12. Not satisfied with the eyeglasses prescribed to me, I designed this custom lens instead. It automatically adjusts based on the surrounding light conditions. Does it glow red when you get angry? No, but that would be most amusing. What can you tell me about the murder? What can you tell me about... Wait, that's what I'm supposed to ask you. Yes, however, you were too slow. You fancy yourself a detective too, Fifi. I just need to know what happened. Me too, so talk. Fine. I knew ahead of time that Freya was going to be busy with her painting all day, so I had planned to spend the afternoon with Poppy. I was in the library all morning preparing the equipment for an experiment, only to find out that Poppy had made other plans and she was in fact planning to ignore me completely. Oh. So what did you do instead? I locked myself in my room and cried. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Why? I don't know, it just sounds kind of sad. It is not unusual. Oh. Good. I was in my room. The lights were off and the door was locked. Someone began banging on the door. I ignored it until the someone began shouting at me. I opened the door. Poppy came into my room. Her makeup was leaking. She told me Freya was dead. I did not believe it. I thought she was playing a trick on me, so I punched her in the face. She insisted that we go up to Flora's tower. We left the room, and Poppy's father was waiting outside. He followed us upstairs. When I saw Freya lying on the floor, I was completely and utterly devastated. Then, I took a sample of the red paint on the unfinished painting. Poppy and I took the sample back downstairs to the library. We performed a test and found out that it was, in fact, blood. You performed that scientific test immediately, even though you were... 
feeling so upset? Of course. Why would one affect the other? Fifi's bedroom should be unlocked now. Can't wait. Fifi's got something pinned up here. What is all this? And that's you, Sally. What? I do not look like that. Do I? Did you notice who isn't on here? Freya? Mm-hmm. And Fifi herself. A new suspect! Don't think you can get out being questioned just because you're a bear. I'm innocent, I promise! Save it! For the judge. What's that big book on the desk? Looks like something Fifi's been writing. Is it a clue? I hope not. It's just a bunch of notes about her microbiology experiments. Nice room. It's a mess. But yeah. It looks like a microscope. A big one. Can I touch it? Uh, I'm not sure this is a microscope. Got it. I'm impressed. Sounds like it unlocked. Yeah, it's built on top of a little metal box. There's a book in here. A pretty ornate window with a great view of the lake. We're supposed to be looking for clues, not assessing the real estate value. And over here, you'll see the owners use sheets of paper to block out all that unnecessary natural light. A simple trick, but it really transforms the space. A picture frame. With no picture. It's tidier than my desk. Oh, the notebook is untouched. It's completely blank. So? Even the most well-used notebooks start off blank. Trinkets. Uh, they're clearly gizmos. Uh, it's too cloudy to see any stars right now. It's also daytime. Let's at least introduce ourselves before touching his telescope. Always a good roll. You know, I've always wanted one of those. A mechanical solar system? What would you do with it? I would look at it. Wait a minute. Earth in the middle, sun on the outside. How old is this thing?
got it. I'm impressed. Did you hear that? Something unlocked. There's a little hatch underneath? What's in there? A bunch of paper. Looks like somebody's research. Shh, listen. Do you hear them? The stars. They're whispering. So quiet, and yet so loud. What are they whispering about? Are they spreading rumors about us? I shouldn't think they concern themselves with such insignificance. We are but specks of dust, you and I. Mm-hmm. Could the speck of dust start by telling me his name? You find yourself standing in the astronomy tower of one Professor Percival Pointer. Hmm. Seems like this tower belongs to the Pointers, and the other one belongs to the Fellows. Well observed, my dear. Tangle Tower is something of a duality, as it happens. Uh, meaningless boundaries, really. They exist only in our minds. Helpful. Me? Not much to say. Strictly speaking, I'm the current head of the Pointer family. And, of course, father to my precious poppy. And? A professional astronomer? Oh, no, that's just a little hobby. I mean, yes, I've studied the stars for over 35 years, published 17 books. Just a little hobby. Sounds like you're quite well known. You must bring in a good amount of money. Oh, dear me, no. My field of research has never yielded any kind of stable financial return. Nor would I expect it to. I am nothing but a humble interpreter for the cosmos, working to translate its message so that I may share it with the world. Cool. Tell the cosmos I say hi. The day began as any other, with blissful, unremarkable routine. I took my usual morning walk around the gardens. Fresh air does wonders for the mind. Did you see anyone else? Penelope and Fitz were in the greenhouse together. I didn't bother them, of course. I sat for a while besides the pond in the garden. It's a favorite spot of mine. Eventually, I returned to my tower and buried myself in my studies for the afternoon. Did you use your telescope yesterday? Once the stars began to appear, naturally. For how long? I can't say. I've been known to lose hours at my telescope. Did you see anything? No actual discoveries, if that's what you mean. So you were all alone up in the astronomy tower. Must have been a while before you found out what had happened to Freya. Quite. Normally, I would be the last to find out about such a thing. But a curious tug of fate led me towards the fellow tower later that evening. I was at my telescope for the majority of the evening. But at one point, I returned to my desk to look something up in a reference book. I couldn't find the book I wanted, so I figured Fiona must have borrowed it. I left my tower and headed down towards the Grand Hall. I spotted Detective Hawkshaw coming out of the library. She looked impatient and slightly frustrated. Same as ever, then? Quite. I passed her by and went upstairs to Fiona's room. The door was locked, but I could hear shouting coming from inside. I recognized Fiona's voice as well as the voice of my own daughter. I had no desire to invade their privacy by eavesdropping, so I waited for them to finish and come out into the hall. Before I could ask about the book, Poppy grabbed my hand and took me upstairs along with Fiona. It was apparent that both of them had already been crying about something. We went up to Flora's tower. Freya was laying on her back, right in the middle of the room. Flora and Fitz were already there. They both looked stoic as ever. Felix and Penny arrived shortly after we did, and then Fiona went downstairs with Poppy for some reason. I quickly decided that I should leave also. I took Penelope with me, and we both went back to our rooms in Pointer Tower. Why did you leave so quickly? Wasn't there anything you could have done to help? Don't take this the wrong way, but the whole ordeal is fellow family business. I I'm quite sure they don't need me getting in the way at a time like that.
my little writing desk. It's kind of cute. There's nothing written in the book, although someone's torn a page out of the middle. A rather magnificent bush, somewhat cruelly confined to a stone pot. There's a letter P carved into the side. Check out that butterfly. Looks evil. Wow, judgmental. They're bird cages, but the birds are coming and going freely. Is that a metaphor? Oh, it totally is. I don't like mirrors. They steal your soul. How do you get your hair so symmetrical without using a mirror? I do it by weight. I can feel if one side is heavier than the other. An especially fancy cage. And it's home to three especially fancy birds. What is it? Huh? Sort of a delicate jade, but with a little seafoam green, is that right? Sorry? Your hair, dear! Which shade do you use? It's lovely! In that shape, you're really pushing the envelope. Oh, thanks. I do what I can to offset Grimoire's beige on brown ensemble. Detectives don't need to be brightly colored. We prefer to blend into the background. You're the detective? Delightful. Penny Pointer, pleasure. Is that short for Penelope? Officially, yes, but I never can be bothered with all four syllables of it. Penelope sounds a little ostentatious coming out of the mouth, don't you think? Uh, sure. Yeah. Twenty-something, Aquarius, love to travel, and nearly all of my friends are birds. Travel? Where to? Anywhere at all, as long as it has species worth studying. Ornithology, they call it. I call it the only thing I've ever been good at. And have you studied the birds here at Tangle Tower? <laughs> but of course! Where else do you think I developed my love of the field? No matter where I go, I always find myself coming home to Tangle Tower. Because of the birds? Oh, no, because of him! Silly to admit, but I suppose I can't bear for us to be apart. Who are you talking about? Hmm? Oh, don't you know? My fiancé, dear Fitz. He's not really the traveling type, you see. Fitz Fellow. The very one. You're engaged to a member of the Fellow family? That's interesting. Hmm. I'm not especially interested in whatever tedious feuding goes on between our two families. Fitz and I find it much easier to stay out of it altogether. I awoke early and headed down into the greenhouse to see Fitz. He's always there, crack of dawn, every morning like clockwork. How come? It's where he's happiest. That and he has a great deal of work to do every day, watering, pruning, mulching, whatever that is. Do you help him with the work in the greenhouse? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> I'd probably break something. So... You stayed with Fitz the whole day? No. In the early afternoon, he went back inside. Rather suddenly, as it happens. Did he say why? He didn't. Probably just a touch of heat stroke, the poor dear. He's more delicate than you'd think. What did you do after that? Let's see. I returned to the aviary to feed my birds. And how many birds are you responsible for? Officially four. But in truth, it's more like 400. Can they not feed themselves? Of course. And they often do. But I think they just like the company. As do I. Sometime in the evening, I left the aviary and headed back towards my room. But in the hall, I spotted Uncle Pointer heading down the stairs. He was muttering something. Seemed a bit upset, the poor dear. I followed him down, but the grand hall was empty by the time I got there. Empty aside from Detective Hawkshaw, who was loitering over by the library. I don't know what it was, but she looked a little lost. I inquired about the professor, and she told me he'd gone up the fellow tower. I ran up the stairs, hoping to catch up with him, but Felix appeared and blocked my path. For some reason, he was coming out of Fitz's bedroom. He looked rather lost, too. I told him I was looking for Uncle. 
He suggested we look up in Flora's tower room. We could see from the hallway. The door was off its hinges. I knew then something was terribly wrong. A moment later, we were gazing down on the body of poor Freya. Uncle Pointer was there. Fitz, too. Standing over in the corner with Fifi and Poppy. What about Flora? Of course, silent as ever. Uncle suggested we should leave. Give the others some space, you know. So he and I both returned to our rooms in Pointer Tower. We can get into Penny's room now. Now, like, right now? That bed, it's like something from a fairy tale. Does it feel warm over here, or is it just me? No, you're right. Maybe the bed has some kind of heater. It's not coming from the bed, it's coming from the wall. A little tea set. Looks recently used. One of the cups has tea in it. What's in the other one? Birdseed. A little bedtime reading? Let's see. Romance novels, detective novels, and... What? This one appears to be both. Nice. Traveling cases. Empty. All of them. Ever get the feeling you're being watched? The mannequins don't have eyes, though. That's not a comforting sentence. This is the fanciest room so far. Too fancy. What does that mean? I don't know. That's some flower. There's something weird about it. It just feels out of place. Looks like nature invited itself in. Rude. It's a birdhouse. Are those real birds? Nope, they're wooden. <sighs> they're using up all the perches. What if a real bird wanted to use it? No, that was it. Nice work. Did the door open? What's in there? Paper lanterns? Whatever they are, I like them. It's like a little parade of floating spirits. Oh, whatever it is, it's playing a little trumpet. Well, it is the music room. He's got to practice. What's with all the broken glass? There's a faded mural on the wall. When I was a kid, I never knew the difference between a mural and a mosaic. You still don't know, do you? No. Who plays the violin, I wonder? It's pretty dusty, so I'm guessing nobody. One old wooden bookcase. Yep. Twenty-five dry old books. Mm-hmm. Four lit candles. Yeah. Am I the only one seeing the problem? All right, you got your wish. Spooky murder mansion? Spooky murder mansion. It's one of those big pianos with the open lids. Don't touch it. Why not? Might be haunted. Are you a ghost? Sally! That's rude! Unless she is a ghost. It may come as a disappointment, but I am alive. Ah. Uh, that makes you a suspect, I'm afraid. I know. What's your name? My name is Poppy. I'm a pointer. And a pianist. We'll need to ask you a few questions about Freya. I know. 
Hey, you're pretty good. All in the wrist. And 13 years of dedicated practice. I'm just me. There's nothing to know. How are you related to the other pointers? My father is Percival Pointer. The professor spends most of his time hidden away in his tower. Barely speaks to anyone these days. Especially not the fellows. Do you get on with the fellows? Two of them. Fifi and Freya are my closest friends. We all turned 19 last year. Do people ever leave Tangle Tower? I don't mean to be rude. It's just, if you're 19... You don't have to answer that, Poppy. It's a fair question. I'd like to move away. Definitely. Fifi, Freya, and I would often talk about it. Argue about it. Freya wanted to leave, but Fifi... Things are more complicated for her. What about now? After what happened, I really don't want to stay here much longer. Three and a half hours of piano practice. Soon as I wake up. Same as always. Three and a half? Does that not hurt your hands? Sure. And you do this in the music room? No. I prefer to practice in my room. When I make mistakes, I like to make them in private. What did you do after that? I was supposed to meet Fifi in the library, but I totally forgot. When I finally got down there, she'd already gone. I checked her bedroom, but it was locked. Was Fifi not in there? No idea. She keeps her door locked either way. So I went back upstairs and out into the moonlight garden. The what? The little garden on the roof outside my room. Was it just you up there? No. Fitz came outside after a while. His room's on the other side. He's been teaching me about flowers. So, did you talk to him? Not really. You ignored each other. I didn't say that. Fitz and I were up in the moonlight garden most of the afternoon. Then we heard this sound. It lasted about three seconds. I've been trying to decide how to describe it, but I'm struggling. It was like something drilling into a piece of metal, but different, worse. I was pretty sure it was coming from Flora's tower, so we went up there to check. Her door was locked. Nobody was answering. I knew Freya and Flora were both supposed to be in there, so I made Fitz kick down the door. I went inside. Freya was lying on the floor. Flora was in the room too? Yeah. I think she realized what had happened at the same moment I did. I didn't know what to do, so I ran downstairs to get Fifi. Her door was still locked, but I knocked and shouted at her. Eventually she let me in. The lights were off, but I could see she'd already been crying. I told her what had happened. She didn't believe me. She got angry. First time I've ever seen her angry. I dragged her out into the hall. My father was there too, for some reason. The three of us went back up to Flora's tower. Then Felix arrived. He had Penny with him. Fifi had this idea. She wanted to do some kind of scientific test. She took me down to the library. We were in there about 15 minutes. After she was done, she went back upstairs and I went back to my room. That's it? That's it. All right. Poppy's bedroom is unlocked. I wonder what's in there. That's all the statements. Let's go over them all. Sheet music. Presumably for piano. It's only a few notes. I'd barely even call that music. Yeah, it's been framed, though. Must be important for some reason. There's a name for this kind of piano. You know, these ones that stand upright. Oh, thank goodness, there are seven lit candles. Wouldn't want it to be dark in here. Various handmade posters. What do you think those symbols mean? Hopefully, nothing. 
a single red rose. How very traditional. Yeah, weird. It's a metronome for keeping time. It's ticking. Is it a bomb? It's supposed to be ticking. Not sure what those symbols are, though. I did it. Why do I win? Not bad. What happened? A little hatch unlocked in the back. Anything in there? Mm-hmm. It's a photograph. Part of a photograph. Just a bunch of clothes on the floor. Nothing weird about that. To you. Anything in the wardrobe? Dresses, mostly. I never realized there are so many shades of black. That is the bed of a vampire. I thought vampires slept in coffins. This is a vampire who needs firm support for their lower back. A big glass door leads out into a garden. Somehow. There's a little mechanism by the handle. I guess we'll come back later. It's locked, but it leads outside. I thought we were halfway up a tower. We are. What's that thing by the handle? It made a noise. I guess that was right. And the door's still locked. I still feel like we made some sort of progress. Something happened. That must be it. Finally, it's open. Whatever's on the other side better be worth it. Giant stone frog. Love it. Nah, he's got his tongue out like he's catching snowflakes. Except those aren't snowflakes. They're feathers. More egg statues. I don't get it. Why eggs? Well, either they have some special significance, or the sculptor was just really lazy. What do you mean? An egg has got to be the easiest shape to make. It's a rose bush, growing on a little patch of bluish soil. Now, apart from a couple of loose petals on one side, the whole thing looks very well cared for. The roses are bright red, too. Now, aren't roses... Normally that color? Exactly. That's one big dragonfly. Or one very small dragon. It's another little statue, doing a really bad job of hiding in the bushes. He's playing a lute this time. He's also wearing headphones. Well, they're not part of the statue. And they're not headphones. They're earmuffs. I might just stay here. Oh, shall I go finish the investigation on my own? Oh, that'd be great. That 
that's all the statements collected. Let's run through them all to see if anything doesn't add up. To see if anyone's been lying. That too. Fitz and I were up in the moonlight garden most of the afternoon. Then I heard this sound. Lasted about three seconds. We thought it was coming from Flora's tower, so we went up there. Her door was locked. Nobody was answering. So I made Fitz kick down the door. Poppy and I went in. Freya was right there, laying on her back. I left my tower and headed down towards the Grand Hall. But in the hall, I spotted Uncle Pointer heading down the stairs. I vacated the library, but before I could begin my ascent, Professor Pointer appeared. I didn't know what to do, so I ran downstairs to get Fifi. I heard someone heading down the stairs, just outside my room. Someone began banging on the door. I ignored it, until the someone began shouting at me. Eventually, she let me in. I spotted Detective Hawkshaw coming out of the library. He emerged from the pointer staircase, crossed the hall, and begun up the fellow staircase. As I was passing through the front door, Penelope called out from behind me. I inquired about the professor, and she told me he'd gone up the fellow tower. I told her what had happened. She didn't believe me. She got angry. I thought she was playing a trick on me, so I punched her in the face. I recognized Fiona's voice, as well as the voice of my own daughter. We left the room, and Poppy's father was waiting outside. He followed us upstairs. I ran up the stairs, hoping to catch up with him, but... Felix appeared and blocked my path. Back in the hallway, I bumped into a very concerned-looking Penelope. She was heading up Fellow Tower to find Professor Pointer. Yes, so I escorted her. Poppy left the room for a while. When she came back, she had her father with her, and Fifi too. Felix and Penny arrived shortly after we did. A moment later, we were gazing down on the body of poor Frey. Then, I took a sample of the red paint on the unfinished painting. She took me down to the library. We were in there about 15 minutes. I quickly decided that I should leave also. I took Penelope with me, and we both went back to our rooms in Pointer Tower. I wanted to go back to my room, but I realized nobody had told Detective Hawkshaw anything. An unremarkable hour passed before the gardener finally made his appearance. I think she was annoyed about being made to wait outside so long, but when I told her about Freya, she fell silent. That's disappointing. What is? All the statements line up with each other. They don't just line up. Some of them even seem to specifically confirm each other. And it's full of the same weird water that was in the- Any fish in there? Not a single one. Although there is something in there. It's a cassette tape. Or it used to be. already uh yeah a little bit and did you make any notes of what she told you yeah i did lovely burn them it'll all be lies why would poppy lie to us because that's what she does she's a snake looks like one too don't you think you're being a little unfair penny she started it <laughs> I must say, the girls are awfully well-behaved today. I think they know we're in the presence of company. They belong to you. Why do you keep them in a cage? They need a special diet, particular treatment. I let them out to fly occasionally, of course. Uh, but they're all one of a kind. I, I, I couldn't let anything happen to them. Do they have names? Of course. Let me introduce you to Tabitha, Tamara, and Tatiana. I've already forgotten all three of those names. Which one is which? 
Oh, that's simple. Tatiana is the oldest, Tabitha is the most patient, and Tamara has the best sense of rhythm. Glad we cleared that up. What about the one on your head? On my head? He's just my hat. He doesn't have a name. Who would name their hat? Hmm. That's, uh, rather strange now, isn't it? We found it in your room. Just lying around, was it? Nope. You'd hidden it. But we found it. We do that. Who's the her in the message? And what's the deal with the petals? It's really none of your business. There's something about those petals we found in Penny's room. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. Uh, so, yeah, we found this. Oh, <laughs> that. That's nothing. You wrote, now I'll get her, on a piece of paper and hid it in your room. That's not nothing. Actually, it's not the message I wanted to ask about. It's those red flower petals. The petals? They're from red roses. And there's only one place in Tango Tower with red roses. We need a clue. Something that shows the roses. And who they belong to. It's a drawing of Fitz and Poppy in the rooftop garden. See what Fitz is holding? <laughs> I can't imagine what you're getting at. But it doesn't matter. I couldn't have taken anything from the rooftop garden. It's only accessible from Fitz's room or Poppy's room. How could I have taken something from a garden to which I have no access? Is it really only accessible from those two bedrooms? For most people, it would be. But don't forget, Penny's the resident ornithologist. My dears, what are you accusing me of? One of Penny's birds was used to spy on Poppy and Fitz and steal evidence from them. We know those two have been spending time together in the rooftop garden. I'm guessing you got paranoid, wanted to know what they were up to. I'm just not the jealous type. I would never suspect Fitz of anything like that. Besides, Tabitha hardly ever leaves her cage. She's certainly never flown up to the rooftop garden. We need a clue to compare with Penny's birds. Something to prove one of them has been in the rooftop garden. Let's take a closer look at these. This yellow feather was left behind by Penny's yellow bird when it visited the rooftop garden. I can't stand it! Knowing the two of them are hidden away up there in their private little garden. I couldn't risk spying on them myself, so I asked dear Tabitha to do it for me. I knew she'd be able to bring me back some evidence. Sorry, Penny, but are you not overreacting a little? You don't understand. Fitz is slipping away from me. He's so quiet with me these days. But being with Poppy seems to bring him out of his shell. I don't know what he sees in her miserable little... I apologize. This really isn't your burden to bear. So, we found some research. What's up with this golden beetle? Is this something you're studying? I can't help you, I'm afraid. 
I think it must be something left behind by a previous inhabitant of Tangle Tower. I'm not the first scientist to ever walk these halls, you know. Well, it wasn't in the halls. It was in your astronomy tower. a little bit. It turned out all right, though. <laughs> What's it supposed to be? It's Flora, of course, surrounded by all her favorite people. She was always kind to me. She'd come into the greenhouse when I was working, sometimes by herself, sometimes with Poppy. I think they were just bored at first. Eventually, they started asking questions. About what? Poppy wanted to learn about flowers. Freya, she used to ask me about the insects. Insects? One of my jobs is to protect plants from things that might eat them. Freya brought me this little glass box, leaves and twigs inside. She'd say, put all the troublemakers in there. Every day I'd put a handful of beetles and other things in the box. Then she'd come along and take it away. I didn't really understand her, but she was always kind. A flower. Yeah, it's a flower. We found it in Penny's room. Okay mean anything to you? Why would it? Come on. I don't really go into Penny's room or anywhere in Pointer Tower. I just don't have a reason to. Did you test the red paint in this pot? Yes, I did. I discovered it too was blood, not paint. A whole pot full of blood? Not a whole pot. It is only partially full. Yeah, but still. Doesn't that freak you out? No. In fact, it may be considered rather reassuring. Do you know who was reading this book? It belongs to my mother. And she left it in the library? No. My mother has not been in the library for some time. Hmm. There's something about Felix's painting supplies. Something suspicious. Let's ask him about it. There's something about the image of Flora in the painting. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. So, about this paint we found in your room. Nothing suspicious about it. I used it to, to paint, obviously. Totally normal thing to do. We never said it was suspicious. Come on then, out with it. What exactly are you accusing me of? It's not your paint bot. Did you take it from somewhere else? What on earth? It's definitely mine. I even have proof. Look, the lid matches the ones on all my other paint pots. End of discussion. That's not the end of the discussion. We need a clue to compare with Felix's red paint. Something to prove who it actually belongs to.
Let's take a closer look at this. Freya's red paint pot was stolen and replaced with Felix's red paint pot, but the lids were swapped to hide it. That red paint is from Freya's supplies, not yours. Swapping the lids doesn't hide what you did. Why are you bothering me about paint anyway? And none of this is connected to your murder. This red paint pot was somehow filled with blood before Freya used it to paint Flora. Oh, that, uh, that's definitely something. Right, fine. Here's the story. I was busy working on uh, a project when I suddenly realized I had run out of red paint. There was a certain amount of uh, the time pressure. So I politely asked Freya if I could borrow hers. Just for a little while, you know, perfectly reasonable request. But she said no. I tried to explain why I needed it, but she didn't seem to care. So, uh, well, I took Freya's red paint pot and swapped it with my own empty one. You went into her room? Not my proudest moment. Uh, but, but it's just paint. I didn't touch anything else. And the paint pot you left behind was definitely empty? Uh, quite. I have absolutely no idea how it got blood in it, if that's what you're asking. Why were you in such a hurry to get a hold of red paint anyway? I was trying to finish this in time for Flora's birthday. I needed red to paint the final details. Could you not have just used a different color? Out of the question. It had to be red and white. If you managed to finish it, why haven't you given it to Flora yet? Nah, uh, well, I decided against it in the end. After what happened, seemed a bit uh, insensitive. So, this painting, specifically that knife in Flora's hand... Yeah, it's creepy. But we didn't find a knife anywhere in the room. So, what's going on? It's not a knife. We need a clue to compare with the painting. Something to explain what that knife shape actually is. Let's take a closer look at this. The painted knife is actually just a feather from an ink dip bird. It's definitely the right shape, but the book's not in color. The thing Flora's holding in the painting is red and white, specifically. Is there anything to suggest that the ink dip bird is red and white too? This little thing? I don't understand why Felix would make a model of this bird as part of a gift for Flora. And come to think of it, why would Flora be holding a feather in the painting anyway? was Flora's pet, so she kept a single feather to remember it by. She kept the bird as a pet, and it died? Maybe. Maybe it flew away. Flora spends all her time staring out the window. Either way, she kept the feather. I think it was pretty important to her. All right. So she was holding the feather while Freya was painting her. But where is it now? You'd think she'd keep it somewhere close by. Yeah, I think she does. Normally. This is where Flora usually keeps her feather.
that we opened it. It's empty. Mm hmm. Completely empty. Flora? She's pointing at something in the corner of the room. It's just a pile of books. They're not. Wait, there's something tucked inside this one. those earmuffs before. They're the ones Fitz always wears when he's out the front gardening. Always wears? Whenever I've seen him, yes. of murder suspects. Always thought that would be kind of cool, but it's just tedious. Falls a little short, doesn't it? There's something I noticed about Freya's knife wound. Hit me. From what we could tell, the blade went in at an exact right angle, perpendicular to Freya's body. And there's only one small pool of blood. Nothing on Freya's hands or anywhere else. The whole thing is just a little too... peaceful. Does this belong to you, Poppy? Now that's not really my style, is it? But who else would own a tape like this? Literally anybody? This is a photo of Fifi and Freya, right? Yeah. How come you're not in it? You're friends with them too, aren't you? I'm not really one for photographs. Fifi looks like she really admires Freya. Fifi's loyalty to Freya is unshakable. I don't know what that is. Weird, considering we found it hidden in your room. Well, my room is full of junk. There's probably a bunch of stuff hidden in there. I don't mean like... Please stop talking to me. Do you know where those earmuffs came from? I put them there. Why? I found them lying around. I think they belong to Fitz. I put them on the statue so he'd see them. I thought they looked like headphones. Like he's in the recording studio with his guitar. No? If they do belong to Fitz, he hasn't taken them back yet. When did you find them? This morning. Where? I don't know, in a hallway. Can't remember exactly. There's something about that diary we found in Fifi's room. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. Is this your diary, Fifi? We found it in your bedroom. Of course it is mine. Ridiculous question. Why is it locked up like that? You seriously require an explanation. Very well. A fairly common concept, the so-called secret diary, is favored in particular by girls between the ages of 10. So there are secrets written here? This particular diary is unused. It doesn't look unused. It's somebody else's diary. How could you arrive at that conclusion? It is kept in my bedroom. It is mine. We need a clue to compare with the diary. Something to prove who the original owner was. Let's take a closer look at this.
This blue book is the same thing as the secret diary, which proves it belonged to Freya. You were hiding Freya's diary in your room, and you kept it locked, too. Why would I do either of these things? Fifi didn't want anyone to see personal secrets within Freya's diary. Is this true, Fifi? I know Freya was your friend, but if you're trying to hide something... You did not know Freya, so this might be difficult to understand. She did her own thing, in her own way. By concealing Freya's written accounts, it is simply my intention to preserve her innocence. Innocence? Might be easier if you just let us read the diary, Fifi. Very well. I will open it. However, as you read it, please remember, Freya was the most kind and the most wise person I have ever known. All right, Fifi unlocked the diary. Finally, what's in there? What do you think that is in Flora's hand? I don't know. It does look like a knife, but Flora wasn't holding anything at all when I saw her after the murder. But there's something bothering me, something else. What? When we went into Flora's room, she wasn't standing in this position. Well, she probably would have moved around a little bit by then. She wasn't standing at all. She was kneeling on the floor. I've seen beetles with brightly colored shells, metallic shells even. They're relatively common, especially around here. There's a difference between that and actual gold. It can't be actual gold. Gold is just inside the earth or whatever. You can't make it. It's called alchemy. It was a whole thing. belongs to you, Hawkshaw? Correct. And, uh, what is it? It's my handheld microscope for up-close investigation work. What do you magnify with it? Trace particles, dust, oils, clothing fibers. Have you used it here at Tangle Tower? I have. I used it to examine the greenhouse only two days ago. What were you looking for? That is between myself and my client. No. Who else would own such a telescope? Oh, yes. It has it only be used. There's something about Hawkshaw's handheld microscope. Something suspicious. Let's ask her about it. This little microscope thing? You said you used it to search the greenhouse. And this would make perfect sense, if you knew what my client had asked me to find. Of course, I still have no intention of disclosing that information. You're such a tease, Hawkshaw. Don't worry, we already worked out what you're searching for. You're not as hopeless as you look. Thanks. So, that's what you were looking for in the greenhouse? This beetle? Surely even you can understand the logic of it. The greenhouse is home to a great many insects. The gardener could have easily kept the beetles hidden in there. Well, Fitz said you questioned him, but didn't actually search the greenhouse. Hmm. He is not exactly the type to appreciate subtlety. He simply didn't notice that I was using my microscope. What do you reckon, Grimoire? I know for a fact you didn't use the microscope in the greenhouse. It's not a microscope at all. 
All of a sudden, Detective Grimoire is some kind of expert on microscopes. The handheld microscope, according to Fifi, uses a telescopic lens, so Hawkshaw lied about it. I'm inclined to believe Fifi when it comes to stuff like this. Aksha, why did you lie about owning a telescope? When you were a child, what did you aspire to become? Uh, a detective, naturally. Emperor of the galaxy. I wanted to be an astronomer. Really? I harbored a desire to understand the secrets of the wider universe. A fool's errand, to be sure. But a seductive one. At 15, I decided instead to apply my intelligence to the world around me. And so, I became a detective. But the yearning for elusive knowledge is a powerful force. I tried to keep it with me. Sorry, but we're way off track. What's the deal with the little telescope? A memento. My childhood. Little more than a toy. Why did you bring it with you? When I discovered that it was Professor Pointer who had hired me, I dared to consider it something of a planetary alignment. I had hoped he might sign my telescope. An extremely childish indulgence, I admit. I never would have guessed. Hold on. You're admitting you didn't use it in the greenhouse then? Correct. As it happens, I have no need to search the greenhouse to such a degree. Professor Pointer doesn't consider the gardener a suspect in our theft investigation. So who is your suspect? Things have become complicated. My lead suspect is your murder victim. Fellow, age 24, profession cryptobotanist, likes soil, dislikes electric lights. Hang on, cryptobotanist? I thought he was just a gardener. That may well be his preferred label. Mine, however, is more accurate. Do you and Fitz not see eye to eye, Fifi? We do not. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. He's well over six foot and you've got to be just barely five. So what's your problem with him? Exactly one week ago, I witnessed him sneaking up Pointer Tower. He was making every effort to avoid detection. So? He was also carrying a knife. There's something about the report of Fitz going up Pointer Tower. Something suspicious. Let's ask him about it. So, Fitz, I have a report that you were seen sneaking up Pointer Tower, uh, holding a knife. That's not right. I don't go into Pointer Tower. I don't own a knife. And I don't sneak. Was it Fifi who told you this? How did you know that? A guess. She doesn't like me very much. But yeah, she was mistaken. Maybe she wasn't wearing her eye lens thing. What do you think, Grimoire? Fifi did see Fitz, but he was holding something else. So, if it wasn't a knife, what was it? What about this? Ah, that. Is it yours? It was a gift. It's sentimental. I have no reason to take it up Pointer Tower. I don't use it at all. is used by Fitz to look after a potted flower in Penny's room. That flower? Yes? I've never seen it before. We need a clue to compare to that flower. Something that proves its connection to Fitz.
Let's take a closer look at these. pot and soil in Penny's room matches the pot and soil found in Fitz's greenhouse. Let me guess, Penny's flower was originally a gift from you, Fitz. There's no way it's a coincidence. Uh, no way what's a coincidence? The flower. It looks exactly like Penny. It took me a long time to breed. I wanted the colors to be exactly right. That's some gift. Turns out Penny isn't particularly interested in looking after plants. So I go into her room every now and again when she's not there. Water the flower, change the soil, just trying to keep it alive. Every astronomy tower needs a telescope. I want to try. You can see right into Flora's room. Not by accident. I can see Flora, but she's not looking this way. She's looking up. Behind her is the back side of the easel holding Freya's unfinished painting. I can't really see anything behind it. Not from this angle. Is that a window? I think it is. Is there another room above Flora's room? We should check that next time we're over there. Isn't this supposed to be an astronomy telescope? I'm pretty sure you need to see the sky for astronomy to work. I can't move it. I think this is just how it's set up. There's something about Pointer's astronomy habits. Something. Suspicious. Let's ask him about it. So, Professor, what interests you about astronomy exactly? It's not a matter of being interested. Once you expand your mind to the wider universe, it cannot be unexpanded. Mm hmm. And how long have you been an astronomer? I really don't like to give exact values unless I'm sure I can quantify them. Convenient. Why do you ask me these things? I have a theory about you, Professor. Oh? Go on. You're not really interested in astronomy at all. What could you possibly mean by that? I think you're interested in a slightly different field of research. don't have time for tiny, insignificant insects. My studies focus only on the inconceivably large and the unimaginably far away. Right. That's why you like using your telescope so much. Yes, naturally. My little portal into another world. Yeah, about that. telescope was actually looking at the crime scene and not up at the sky. First you accuse me of being a lowly entomologist. Now you're accusing me of uh, what? Spying? Are you spying? Why would I need to spy on Flora? Why? Because you lost your golden beetle specimen and it's made you paranoid. You think somebody stole it from you. Might not have been Flora you were spying on. Might have been Freya. It's... you... it's a very precious specimen! Incredibly rare! Valuable in ways you could never understand. Freya was always sneaking around, both towers and in the gardens too. She was definitely up to something. So, this next question is important. You were looking to Flora's room around the time of the murder. Did you witness the crime, Professor? Thank you. 
No, I didn't. When I looked into the room, Flora was already lying on the floor. Flora? You mean Freya? No, Flora. She was lying by the window. I couldn't see Freya at all. It was fairly dark, and the telescope isn't at a very good angle. That's why I decided to head over there myself. I needed to know what was going on. This changes your statement, doesn't it? No, everything I told you in my statement was true. Apart from the reason you left your tower in the first place. Right. Let's go over what we know about the crime scene. Freya was definitely up to something. Something to do with the statue in the garden, I think. Maybe we should go back and check. And we could have missed something. <laughs> this wasn't here before. What is it? It's a little wooden toy. It looks kind of like a crab. There's a note stuck to the back. What does it say? Grimoire? What do you think? Is it really from her? How can it be? Why don't we check the handwriting with Freya's diary? Good idea. Hold on. Well? It's a perfect match. Well, it's confirmed. We have a ghost helping us. Let's keep this to ourselves for now. What about the little wooden toy thingy? Maybe we can put it to some kind of use. more about the crime scene now. So, what do you think? Was Freya stabbed by her own painting? Blood from the paint pot was used to paint the red tip of the painted ink dip feather to resemble a bloody knife. I think you're right. Can't decide if I'm disappointed or relieved. I have a question. Why? Either it's a very strange coincidence or somebody set it up. Somebody deliberately put blood in the paint pot and hid that feather after the crime. Why? To distract us? Possibly. Well, it worked. Possibly. Flora's the only person who could have hidden the feather, unless someone took it from her. Let's go over what we do know. The door was locked the whole time. It stayed locked until Fitz kicked it down. Normally, it can only be opened from the inside. Pointer said he couldn't see Freya from his telescope, but he did see Flora lying by the window. So whatever got Freya, got Flora too? Except Flora survived. She didn't get a stab wound like Freya did. Hold on. If there was no knife, then what did stab Freya? Uh, it could be anything. It might not even be important. How is it not important? Right now, I'm less interested in the what, and more interested in the how. The angle of Freya's wound suggests she was stabbed at a perfect right angle. That is, from directly in front of her. But she was standing right up by the canvas. Somehow, Freya ended up lying on her back, still perfectly in line with a painting. Maybe something went through it. Through the painting? Wouldn't that leave a hole? Okay, well, how about this? How do we know Freya was stabbed before she fell over? Maybe her being stabbed and her falling over are completely unrelated.
It's piano music. something about that pink cassette tape. Something suspicious. Let's ask Poppy about it. I need to confirm something with you, Poppy. Confirm away. What can you tell us about this cassette tape? Is it yours? Uh... It belongs to Freya. She liked to have music playing while she was painting, you know. And do you know what kind of music is on this tape? No idea. Acid jazz? It's piano music. It sounds an awful lot like your music, to be honest. Sure it doesn't belong to you? Why are we even talking about this? Cassette tapes have been redundant for a good few years now. The tape was found at the crime scene. It was in the gramophone. It's not mine. I'd never own anything like that. Why not? Not my color. You used to like these colors. Ugh, ridiculous. We need a clue to compare with the cassette tape. Something that proves Poppy used to like these colors. Let's take a closer look at this. Found at the crime scene matches the pink cassette player used by Poppy in this old photo. That is not me. Yeah, it is. I'll prove it. You look a little different, but Fifi and Freya are pretty recognizable. It's clearly a photo of you with your two best friends. Why'd you tear it up, and then hide it? I think the answer is pretty straightforward. Poppy doesn't want to look like that anymore. That's it. Makes this whole thing seem kind of irrelevant. Maybe. It depends on the reason. The reason she doesn't want to look like that anymore? The passage of time is a powerful thing. Hold on. This means that pink cassette tape does belong to you, Poppy. It used to. I recorded some piano music onto it and gave it to Freya as a gift. Years ago. Freya could have easily been listening to this tape at the exact moment she was killed. There's gotta be a connection between the tape, the gramophone, and the murder. There's one other thing I want to know. How did it get that crack down the middle? I have no idea. Yeah, it's mine. Can you play the tune for us? Sure. It's literally eight notes. I have it memorized. That's all four melodies, I think. So, what do we do with them? Should we go back to the gardens again? Let's try this again.
You know, I think we might be able to solve this now. That's gotta be right. Nothing. Maybe it's broken. Wait, do you hear that? Are we gonna go in? Yeah. But there's a couple of things I want to do first. statue of a wolf, standing up straight, like a man. You know, there's a name for that. I know. It's not quite as dusty as everything else up here. Also, it's not a statue. It's stuffed. Where's that light coming from? Well, it's just daylight, I think. There's a decent gap between those floorboards. Is that what I... I think it is? What is that? Not sure. Some kind of reel? Looks like it might attach to something. Are we done? For now. It's about time we found out what's beneath the garden. it goes. Down. It looks like they're being boiled, but the liquid is ice cold. Bugs big ones. Looks like they're made of metal. What's in there? Forensic Entomology, Volume 3. That's an incredibly specific area of study. Is that a lab coat? Warning, hand wash only. Size, small. Rows of plants, growing in wide wooden boxes. What color is the soil? It looks black, but it's too dark to tell. Is it locked? Seems likely, doesn't it? Weird looking safe. I'm pretty sure the latches can slide into the middle. That was it. Nice work. Anything inside? Yeah, more research.
Whose research is this? This is some seriously in-depth research. That's impressive, but it's incomplete. There's a section missing. So, this is Pointer's secret lab? Definitely seems like he's the one using it. I guess not a lot of people know about the secret entrance. Right. But if Pointer's the only one who comes down here, why would he need to lock his research in a safe? Who is he hiding it from? He's just paranoid. Especially about his golden beetle. What do you think he's trying to do, exactly? Pointer has been trying to breed the golden beetle in the underground laboratory. Why? Because it's rare? Because it's gold. Is that it? I think so. I don't think he cares about entomology any more than he cares about astronomy. He just wants to get one over on Felix. If he can breed his own gold, suddenly Poppy's inheritance is looking pretty... Uh... Infinite. It might explain why he was so worried about losing the beetle. Maybe somebody did steal it. Might have been Freya after all. We know she was trying to get through the secret door in the garden. She might not have known what was down here, though. Maybe she was just curious. Curious, sure. But not naive. I reckon she knew what was going on. I think we're still missing the bigger picture. There's no way this is all just about a beetle. We're done. Ready to go down? Again? Basements don't normally have windows. We're at the bottom of the lake. We must be. Right. But if that's the lake bed, why does it look like that? Like what? White. Smooth. No plants. No anything. That's not what a lake looks like. Where are we? Did you notice how much light this room has? For a room with one candle? It's all coming through the window. I'm pretty sure lakes are supposed to be darker at the bottom, not lighter. Why is there a room down here anyway? And why is it so much older than the rest of Tangle Tower? We still don't really know why people came to live here in the first place. Maybe they just wanted to get rich, like Pointer with his beetles. I feel like the Remingtons came here for the lake. For what was in it. It's empty, though. More empty than a normal lake would be. It is now, yeah. Maybe we're too late. It's an old coat rack. Looks thoroughly neglected. Two cloaks. And a green hat draped on top for good measure. Gives off kind of a dungeon vibe. What do people actually use chains for? Nothing good. A single book on a little makeshift table. This is creeping me out slightly. Why? I think it's a children's book. We're too late. This photograph has been stabbed. Why? By what? Not sure. Some kind of metal stabbing thingy. So what's the photo? Do you know who it is? In the photo? This man. In the photo. He reminds me of something, from one of our clues. Felix made a little model of him, for Flora? Yeah, it makes sense when you know who he is. Lord Remington. Remington. That makes him Flora's father, meaning the girl in the photo is... Yeah, it's her. See the bird, too. I never would have guessed. Times sure do change. I don't know. 
I don't think she looks so different. There's a roll of paper up there. I'll see if I can reach it. Let me guess. Blank. The Rooftop Garden. That name makes a little more sense in this context. It's the room above us. The one we were just in. The laboratory? Yeah. Study. Wait. I know what you're thinking. And no, we never went in there. How did we miss it? This seems pretty significant. Agreed. Let's head back up to the Grand Hall. I want to find that last room. Wow, it's dark all of a sudden. How long were we down there? This must be it. This thing goes all the way up. How are we supposed to get up there? Hang on. It's pitch black, but I think there's a switch. A ladder. Want to go up? It's got a translucent exoskeleton. You can actually see its insides. Also, crabs normally have two claws, right? Not three? Gah. You sure we should be touching it? Grimoire, don't you think it looks familiar? This crab really reminds me of something. That little wooden toy we found? Yeah, but I don't think that's going to help us. I think I've seen it more recently. Perfect. It's a wooden pin board, hung up on one of the chains. Looks like there's a couple of things missing from it. Coffee table, half-empty wine bottle, lap left on. I'm gonna say someone's been using this room. Someone complacent enough to leave their notebook lying around. An axe and some kind of hunting rifle mounted on the wall. Honestly, doesn't look like they've been moved in a few years. I'm more worried about the third one. The third one? The one that isn't there. An incinerator built into the wall. It's still pretty hot. Is there anything left inside? It's mostly ashes. But yeah, there's something. Someone's been using this room. I don't get it. This room is in the original building plans for the mansion, but nowadays it's some big secret? It's not a secret to everybody. At least one other person still knows about this room. The way the notebook was left out on the table makes me think it's someone who has the room all to themselves. 
Whoever it was, they left more than just the notebook. There's a whole design project on this pinboard. Feels like someone put quite a bit of effort into it. It's a shame there are things missing from it. I'm betting it'd make more sense if we could see it all together. That might not be impossible, you know. from Freya's room and those sketches. Did Freya design Detective Hawkshaw's clothes? What kind of sense does that make? I don't think that's why Freya made that painting, but it may have been why somebody took a photo of it to use as reference. And as for those sketches of Hawkshaw, I don't think Freya actually drew them. It was somebody else, someone with less of a talent for art. Doesn't exactly narrow it down. Should we go ask Detective Hawkshaw about all this? I'm not sure. We still don't know what's really going on. What's this? Something somebody didn't want us to find. What is it? Was someone trying to hide it? From us? I don't know, but it looks incomplete to me. I want to know what happened to the rest of it. Where are the other parts? We found them already. What do you make of it? Not sure. Let's keep an open mind. You don't think the crossbow is the murder weapon? Oh no, the crossbow is definitely the murder weapon. But that doesn't mean we've solved the mystery. Who are all the people in this photo? Not sure, but it looks like someone didn't like them very much. Their eyes have all been crossed out. photo is important. I'm sure of it. Another photograph. Their faces are all crossed out with some kind of black ink. That's weird. Oh, you think so? No, I mean, something I just realized. Sally, did we meet any of these people here at Tango Tower? Well, the woman on the left looks a little like Poppy, but her style is way different. And at first, I thought the guy on the top right was Felix, but now that I look at it, I don't think it is him. Time to solve this. All right, break out the notebook. Time to put it all together. Let's start with this. It's an arrow for the crossbow, and it matches Freya's wound. It's the murder weapon. I'm sure of it. Despite the fact it doesn't have any blood on it, and it wasn't found anywhere near the crime scene? Mm-hmm. It was cleaned, then it was hidden. I don't think anybody expected us to get down to that room at the bottom of the lake. Okay, so Freya was shot by a crossbow. Where was it fired from? It was fired from above Freya. Above, huh? Yeah. Our diagram doesn't show everything. Let's add in the rest of the crime scene. The attic. Perfect hiding place. We even found a part of the murder weapon up there. The reel was used to pull the arrow back up through the crack in the floorboards. Explains why we never found a weapon at the crime scene, I guess. The murderer must have dropped the reel in the attic. I'm guessing they were in a hurry to escape. Wait, the arrow was fired through the crack in the floorboards? Yeah, it's directly above where Freya was found lying on her back. Nope, doesn't add up. It would have missed her if she was still standing up by the painting. Ah, right. Unless... Freya was already lying on her back. 
before the arrow was fired. I think so too. She'd fallen unconscious. Something in the room caused Freya to fall unconscious. The gramophone. Right. But the gramophone by itself can't do that. There is something in the gramophone. Mm-hmm. Something small. Pointer's research says it can emit an incredibly loud hiss when it feels threatened. Poppy and Fitz both said they heard a loud noise around the time of the murder. Neither of them had any idea what it was. This seems a little far-fetched. Is it really loud enough to knock someone out? No. I don't think so, not by itself. But don't forget, it was being amplified by the shape of the gramophone. Now, I don't think we're purely talking about volume either. It might just be a particular type of frequency. This is getting kinda scientific. Since when do you know anything about the effects of weaponized audio frequency? I don't. But I think someone else does. Do you remember that statue we found in the music room? The hornet's playing. It's a pretty similar shape to the one on the gramophone. That broken glass isn't there on accident. This is someone's science experiment. Thinking about it, Pointer said he saw Flora was knocked out too. I guess they were both in range of the noise, although Pointer might have been lying. Personally, I think he was telling the truth about that. It's pretty clear a powerful frequency did pass through Flora's tower. Caused quite a bit of damage too. Those cracks didn't appear out of nowhere. Freya's paints, the pink cassette tape, and the gramophone itself, they all sustained similar damage while they were in that room. That's some seriously powerful vibration. Enough to crack metal. Enough to knock someone out all the way across a room. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't get. If the frequency was so powerful and had such a big range, how did the murderer pull it off? Wouldn't they have been in range too? Think about it. They can't have been much further away from the gramophone than Flora was. They protected themselves. How? These are some pretty heavy-duty earmuffs. I think they'd be enough to block out the sound. Right. Let's go over everything from the start. One, Freya is painting Flora's portrait. They're listening to music on the gramophone. Two, the murderer is hiding in the attic, wearing earmuffs. Three, the golden beetle starts to emit its hissing noise. Hold on, how did it know? The beetle? Yeah, what triggered it at that particular moment? Pointer's research said it makes the noise when it feels threatened. I'm not sure. Maybe something in the music? Maybe. <clears throat> Four. Freya and Flora are both knocked unconscious by the vibrations. Freya lands on her back. She drops the brush and palette by her side. Five. The murderer fires the crossbow directly downwards. Six. The arrow is pulled back up on the reel. Seven. The murderer leaves the attic. Presumably. Eight. The door is kicked down. Fitz and Poppy enter the room. That's it. There's something bothering me. What? I just want to check something. Let's go back to the crime scene. Freya, did you leave us a clue? So what's bothering you? Something that's not here. The thing we didn't find. We know she was holding it during the painting. Flora's ink dip feather? It was here. In this room. Where'd it go? We found it somewhere else. We were a little too late to save it. So it was stolen from the crime scene, and ended up in the incinerator down in the study. 
Someone wanted to destroy it, I guess. But how? How was it stolen from up here in Flora's tower? Presumably, Flora dropped it when she fell unconscious. Yeah, and then what? The murderer couldn't have stolen it if they were up in the attic. So the question is, how could they steal something from a room they weren't able to access? The final clue about the crime scene. Freya left it for us right here. It's in the unfinished painting. It's not quite a photo, but still, it's an image of the crime scene recorded just before the murder. Oh, if only she'd finished it, and then I could be totally sure. It's true she never finished it, but she did intend to finish it. Meaning? We know more about the painting than what Freya actually got down on the canvas. Freya prepared all the colors she was going to need before she started painting. going to be used to paint the sketch of something sitting in the window. Something in the window. Oh. There she is. Our little thief. How long has it been there? Did it hear the whole conversation? She did, but she's a very good listener. Well now, I think this has quite served its purpose, don't you? Penny, why did she- It's Penelope. If you don't mind. But before we begin, isn't there a certain formality demanding our attention? Lovely. Now, tell me, what was it that drove you this far? I'm ever so curious. Justice for Freya. Is that right? Interesting. Why did you do it, Penny? What did Freya do to you? Absolutely nothing. So, what? You just hated her indiscriminately? Freya Fellow was an inspiration to us all. She was possessed of a great energy. The volition to create something from nothing. The willpower to walk beyond her boundaries. She was truly free. Everything I couldn't be. You know what? I just realized I actually have no idea who Penelope Pointer really is. Weird, isn't it? Considering we've met her, what is it, three times now? Exactly. How do we know this one isn't a disguise, too? You think you've already hollowed us out, don't you? Only a few short hours at Tangle Tower. And you feel like you've got everyone sussed, unearthed, every single one of our secrets, nothing but bullet points for your notebook. Go on, indulge me. What does it say in your notes about Penelope Pointer? <laughs> Suppose I can't argue with that, can I? Penny, we only know what you choose to tell us. So, why not help us out? Very well. Penelope Pointer is actually not very important at all. She pales in comparison to those who came before her and to those that came after. Living at Tangle Tower, it is very difficult to attain the levels of self-realization you probably take for granted. Um, you sure this is a Tangle Tower thing? And not a you thing? Perhaps you didn't notice. 
Not one of them is happy. Not one. So why stay? Why not just leave? I thought she did leave. Penny, you said you traveled, didn't you? I did. Many times I've walked away. It did not help me. You saw the family tree hanging in the Grand Hall, did you not? Yeah, it lists a bunch of people who don't live here anymore. A bunch of people who don't live here anymore. I couldn't have put it better myself. My mother, for one. My father, too. The other two Remingtons. Poppy's mother, Primrose. And her brother, Richard. And Fitz's father. That's five. Five people that might have lived here, but don't. And that was the first question I wanted answered. You wanted to know where they'd all gone? More than that. I wanted to know if I belonged with them. I have no place here. Not among the Fellows, the Remingtons, or the Pointers. But I felt there must be a reason why everyone else left. Some common purpose they all shared. Perhaps it could be my purpose, too. So... What did you actually do about it? Nothing I could do, at first. Nobody would tell me anything. The more questions I asked, the fewer answers I got. Then, I found it. I was 19. Same age Freya is now. Found what? The study. The one hidden in the middle of the house. It's right next to a bedroom. I'd hear voices at night, deep ones. And the strangest thing, the wall behind my bed would get incredibly hot. For hours on end, the paint would peel, wallpaper wouldn't stay up. I thought I was cursed. I thought it was something trying to break through. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I found my way in the same way you did. Once you know it's there, it's simple. So, you got into the study and found the incinerator. That must have been a relief, right? It was still warm when I found it. Then, I looked inside. Let's see how thorough you've been. Tell me, do you know what a misted is? Misted? Misteds? Sure, yeah. Hmm, you're more observant than I thought. Sorry, what are we talking about? It's a collective term, from before my time. Birds, insects, amphibians, anything living off the lake water. The mutation can take several generations, or it can happen overnight. Wait, mistids. Like cryptids. Uh, like Bigfoot or whatever. A little egregious, isn't it? I suspect that was an intentional parallel. The main difference being mistids are perfectly real. They're just kept secret. Or at least, that was the original plan. As it happened, some got out. Quite a few got out. How do you know all this? When I entered the study at 19, I found a single object that rather changed my life. Something which answered my questions while at once creating all new ones. The five missing family members standing together as a single unit, calling themselves the Ambassadors of Misted Mansion. So, the house was renamed from Misted Mansion to Tango Tower? And rightly so. The age of Misted Mansion is long past. When I looked inside the incinerator on my first visit to the study, I found nothing but ash. The afterimage of a bygone era denied to me in its entirety. The study, the room at the bottom of the lake, the lake itself, all empty shells. I felt my only hope lay with the ambassadors. If I could find them, maybe, maybe they'd share the family history that Flora and the others were trying so hard to forget. How did you track them down? It was tough. They'd taken almost everything. Books, maps, charts, the creatures themselves, all lost taken away or destroyed. But I got lucky. I got a lead. I found one, and he led me to the rest. And? What happened? Why'd you paint out all their faces? They didn't help you either, did they? 
Nineteen-year-old me had imagined they'd all left with a mission. A unified purpose. But they hadn't. They were, in fact, every bit as fractured as the people that still live here. Most of them had left tracking escaped mystics. Some claimed to be researchers, others little more than hunters. All five, completely useless to me. Even your own parents? Eventually, I returned to Tangle Tower. I had nowhere else to go. I considered giving up. But instead, I made a decision. There was only one person at Tangle Tower still of interest to me. My dear Uncle Pointer had suddenly made a show of taking up astronomy. A fairly superficial charade, I don't think many people were fooled by it. But I knew it wasn't just a falsehood, it was a mask. Pointer had found something, something from the era of Misted Mansion. So, where did he get the beetle? I cannot be sure. But I theorize that he received it in the post. In the post? From who? Who can say? Someone outside Tangle Tower. But the thought that he would be in contact with such a person. All that time, I decided to take what was owed to me. So you stole it. Stealing the beetle turned out to be only the first step. Upon realizing it was gone, Pointer made little effort to disguise his frustration. I asked what was bothering him. He foresaw no risk in sharing a little of the truth with his niece. He told me he'd lost a rare treasure, something he'd been keeping safe. I suggested, innocently, that perhaps it was not lost. Perhaps it had been stolen. He was very ready to believe he'd been the victim of theft. When I offered to call in a private detective, he jumped on the idea. She arrived the next day. Hawkshaw prides herself on her punctuality, as you know. Why, though? Why go through all that? The name, the costume, and everything? It's somewhat sad to admit, but I had a little use left for Penny Pointer as she was. Hawkshaw afforded me new advantages. Opportunities. But didn't you have to pretend to be working for Professor Pointer? Ah, uh, well, that was one of the advantages. Pointer was in such a desperate state, he was finally willing to share some of his secrets. On the second day, Hawkshaw explained she needed to be able to search the secret laboratory. Pointer gave in, and gave me the code for the harp statue. Reluctantly, but still. So... you stole Pointer's research? I would have done, if I'd found anything worth stealing. But he had made remarkably little progress barely scratching the surface of the beetle's true mystery. Which is? Ha! <laughs> she carries an exoskeleton approximately 90% identical to gold. But it's not the 90% I'm interested in. Did you ever question what exactly makes the water here so unique? Before Misted Mansion was built over the lake. Before the lake was even a lake. Lord Remington and his wife built a small structure here. A research station, supposedly. Fast forward two or three generations, and as you saw for yourself, it's been mostly cleared out. The ambassadors took everything when they left. And everything they didn't take was burned in the incinerator. However, possessing additional insight, I found something the others had missed. It's not much but I have what I need. So, why isn't this the end of the story? Why did you stay? Why did you kill Freya? Simply put, Freya was too good for me. It's my fault. I pushed her over the edge, unknowingly, but still, I take the blame. What are you talking about? Did you know I based the design for Hawkshaw on something Freya painted? That's right. I had assumed it was purely abstract. 
I just thought it had a good energy. I later discovered it was a figure of some kind, something from Freya's recurring nightmare. For all her vitality, I think Freya was probably the most troubled of all of us. She was desperate to leave Tangle Tower, but she couldn't just walk away. For quite some time, she'd been trying to break into Pointer's laboratory. Freya and her friends were halfway through deciphering those symbols on the harp statue, I believe. Why did she care about getting into Pointer's lab? That's exactly what I wondered. At first, I thought perhaps she just wanted to free the beetles. She has a fondness for them. What Pointer was doing upset her significantly. But in fact, I think it was something else. I think she wanted to free Fiona. The real reason Freya was unable to leave Tangle Tower is that she could not get Fiona to agree to come with her. We're now firmly in the realm of speculation, but I think Freya felt that exposing the darker secrets of Tangle Tower, not just to the rest of the family, but to the world, would compromise all three families. And perhaps, somehow, free Fiona from the shackles of her inheritance. That was her plan anyway, but something happened. Before Freya could find her way into Pointer's laboratory. She found her way into your study. Found your notes. Found that photograph. I'm willing to bet she put it all together quicker than we did. So she worked out what had happened to the five ambassadors. Specifically, what you'd done to them when they refused to help you. Freya had made a promise to paint Flora as a birthday gift parting gift, no less. She'd be in a locked room, several hours away from her friends. It was my best chance. But why hide in the attic? And why bother with the beetle at all? The beetle in the gramophone wasn't for Freya. It was for Flora. She didn't deserve to be involved. She suffered enough. I couldn't get Flora out of the room. But if she could be unconscious, then she wouldn't have to witness anything. Why the knife? The illusion of the painted knife with the blood? That was for Fiona. And Poppy too, I suppose. Gave them something to focus on. You mean it distracted them while you made your escape? It helped them cope. The very idea of something abstract, something supernatural. I believe it made things marginally less painful for them, initially. It worked on you, too. So why are you still here? Why not take your first chance and leave? Ah, well, I've been waiting for an opportunity to get my beetle back. I'd really rather not leave without it. Wait, it's still here? It's still inside the gramophone. What's going on? Poppy, they are both awake. I can see. You two all right? My head hurts. What happened to us? You were both unconscious. Fourteen minutes by my count. Really? You're both fine. No injuries. Was it the beetle? In the gramophone? I heard it through the ceiling in my room. The exact same sound we heard before the murder. I guess it must have been. So how did we get down here? What happened to Penny? Fit saved both of you, obviously. When I reached Flora's tower, you were both unconscious, and Penny was crouched down beside you. She had her crossbow on her, but who knows? She may have just been checking you were both asleep. Did you know she, uh, that she was the murderer? Poppy and Fifi suspected her. Apparently, they were pretty close to solving it themselves. Fitz did not want to believe us, because he liked Penny. A lot. But what happened? Fitz, what did she do when she saw you? She jumped out the window. What? 
Did she survive? She did. I heard something land in the garden outside my room. But by the time I got out there to check, she was already gone. Hang on. Poppy, why do you have Penny's hat bird? She left him behind. I found him sitting on the floor in the aviary, all by himself. Poor little thing. The mean lady didn't care about you at all, did she? No, she didn't. I apologize. Poppy seems to be under the illusion that the bird can understand human language. So, Penny got away. I'm afraid she did. We had suspected she might try to escape. I was stationed here by the lake's edge. I proved to be an ineffective guard. She took the boat. Did she take the beetle with her? Nope. How do you know? Because it's right here. It was still in the gramophone. I guess I scared her off before she had a chance to take it. Poppy, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to give it back to your father? No, I'm not. It doesn't belong to anyone. So, I'm going to put it on the ground and never bother it again. I think that's what she would have wanted. <laughs>